Hello everyone, my name is Sai Zia. I am a technical marketing engineer from MFI Switching Team. Today I would like to update on the new iOS XC 17.21 release. Cisco bring the new software release feature iOS XC 17.21, which offer a suite of new software features and introduce new hardware in Catalyst 9000 portfolio. This is the extended maintenance release for all Cat9 Gate platform. This EMR release comes with support lifetime of 36 months and will be recommended release for wide scale production deployment for supporting small as well as ISSU or XFSU. This release focuses on delivering key capability with quality across product and solution as well as encompasses key customer as for ease of deployment. This really introduced both hardware and software capability across the area of CAD9 Quiz switching platform, security, eVPN fabric solution, and programmability. Here is the key feature summary for 17.21 release. Let me start with new hardware edition of iOS XC 17.21. We introduced two new line cards on 9400 portfolio. These two new line cards are generation 2 line cards compatible with 9400 SUP2 and SUP2 Excel. This line card can provide higher speed downing for expanded high-end SS design. Let's take a look at the first line card. This is a C9400-LC-12Q. This line card comes with 12 USB ports. The first 8 ports can support 40 gig, and the last 4 ports can support 40 gig and 100 gig speed. By default, all 12 port will be running as 40 gig. If you want to enable 100 gig mode, one of the 40 gig port in the same port group is going to be disabled. For example, port number 1, 5, and 9 are part of the same port group. If you enable port 9, this is 100 gig speed, like 400 gig speed, port 5 will be disabled while port 1 and 9 are active. So let's take a look at the second line card. This is a C9400-LC-24XY. This line card comes with 24 port of SFP ports. The first four ports can support 10 gig speed, and the last 20 ports can support 10 gig and 25 gig speed. In addition to the these two line cards, we are also now officially supporting 50 gig optic on 9500X and 9600 platform. Now let's take a look at new feature. First feature is single reload from more upgrade. Prior iOS XC release, Cat9 platform take additional reload for any ROM mode or FPG upgrade. So in case of if you are upgrading new iOS XC release, that release need to upgrade FPG or ROM mode. It will do uh, take a long time to reload multiple times depending on the upgrade they are, we are doing. Right, so with this release, we can now can do just single reload to upgrade iOS XC as well as a firmware that is required to upgrade particular release. So they will save a lot of time. Another feature is uh, embedded packet capture support on AppGig Ethernet port. So a, a embedded packet capture is basically capturing the packets that are flowing through the switch right, in the particular interface that you can able to analyze and support or uh, export it to the Wireshark. So with this capability now available on AppGeek port, so analyzing application traffic is a lot easier for troubleshooting. So in terms of the security feature, so we are now supporting GRE over IPsec capability on 9400X platform. GRE can en encapsulate several packet type of traffic such as unicast, multicast, broadcast, or MPLS. However, GRE does not provide any type of protection for the transmitted payload. So, GRE or IPsec feature allow flexibility for using GRE along with the security or IPsec. This feature is already supported on other platform. Now, this is being added to 9400H new uh, platform. Another security feature is DSCP marking of radius packets. So prior to 17.21 release, if the switch perform 802.18 authentication, then, uh, then the communication toward the radius server is marked with the configured DSCP value. However, if the switch is accessed via SSH, the communication toward the radius server has DSCP default 0 instead of the configured value. 
So with this release, radius marking capability is now expanded on all type of radius packet regardless of which subsystem they are originated from. Let's take a look at Fabric solution. EVPN Fab, uh, BGB EVPN provide the scalable solution to build different layer 3 and layer 2 overlay topology over existing infrastructure. IPv6 and early support for EVPN Fabric was added on 17.11.1. With 17.11.1 unique as IPv4 only overlay or IPv6 only overlay or Julia stack on IPv6 analog was supported. This provides similar migration from IPv4 to IPv6 customer who are migrating to IPv6 only environment. Starting 17.12.1, IPv4 overlay multicast to transport the existing and IPv6 underlay is added to the EVPN portfolio. Moreover, VNI scale has increased from 512 to 1000. In case of the programmability automation area, iOS 670.12.1 bring enhanced feature to the programmability and automation. With this 70.12.1 release, iOS 6C introduced proto encoding for GNMI, CAD, and SET operation, as well as SNMP to GN mapping. In previous iOS XE release, proto encoding for GNMI telemetry subscription was enabled. The proto encoding mechanism used a binary encoding format for both path and value to increase efficiency of the telemetry data transfer. With JSON IETF, the aggregated data is sent to the collector and with proto. There is this is there is more granularity in the transmitted data. Both Telegraph and Yan Switch toolings already support Proto. Additionally, there is an industrial trend of moving from SNMP to Yan. So Cisco is helping to ease transition by providing mapping between SNMP OIDs to Yan expert starting 7.21. So with this release, uh, some of the features being uh, supported here, something like PoE, LLDP, interfaces, memory, CPU process, additional feature mapping will be available in a future release. So with this programmable update, iOS Cisco iOS C enable faster telemetry and ease the SNMP to EM mapping. This is the summary, right? So iOS C bring key feature in terms of the platform, security, EVPN fabric, and programmability. So we have added two new hardware uh in 9400 platform along with optic support also we are adding some infra feature something like single reload feature uh, on the software upgrade as well as security features such as ipsec over uh, gi over ipsec and uh, additional adding ipv6 analysis support in evvm fabric as well as proto encoding on the programmability area so the next release is going to be iOS 67.13.1 release. It will be standard maintenance release and it is targeted to release in November 2023. Please stay tuned for more information on the new software release. Thank you so much.